Hello friends. Welcome to an impromptu moment to discuss real life events, carry pigeons, <laughs> not really, and um, fear of missing out. Do you have a fear of missing out? I know in religious circles, in motivational circles, in uh, not just spiritual circles, but circles where you're on this track of learning, 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 training, training, training. Got to, got to get with the next coach. Got to hear the next pastor. Got to be in that next energy healing service. Whatever's trending. Jen said, uh, "Fear of FOMO." I'm like, "What the heck is FOMO?" She said, "Everybody knows what FOMO is." I'm like, <laughs> "Except for me." <clears throat> and so today's about FOMO. And Jen's going to uh, rock on. Jennifer Gregory. <laughs> Jennifer Gregory? Nice. What does fear of missing out mean? And then give some examples in your personal life when you've had a fear of missing out and then missed out, but then realize you never missed out. And then where you are today in all this theological crap. I mean, stuff. Things. Go ahead. Examples. <laughs> examples. Um. Samples. <laughs> Now I'm like, I need an example. Um, conference <clears throat> with him. You've been in the conference circles for years. Yes. So, so you've, you've served behind the scenes. You've had green room experience. You've met mighty dogs. You've met little dogs that became mighty dogs. Um, yeah. You've been the private person in the corner where nobody knew you. And then you've been on the stage with a microphone. And you've been everything in between. True that. So you have a smattering of... A place of understanding <coughs> what goes on. You know why okay. there's a green room so that other people don't get in so people can have rest. It's not like we're separate. I mean, there's yes. lots of practical things, but we're talking about FOMO. Yeah. Well, we were kind of chat. We were running an errand, getting some precious time just in the car with Donna, which is, you know, life happens and sometimes <clears throat> what we get is what we get. And so we were chatting about a current circumstance where there's going to be an event <clears throat> this week hosted by uh, ministry people. Yeah, God's house, and it's freaking amazing, and everybody should go. Go ahead. <laughs> With, um, ministry people who are precious. That's going to be Hey, this is what the karaoke guy does. <clears throat> he interviewed like Stevie Wonder like this. Okay. So, well, all I was thinking in that vein was that there's a precious ministry that's hosting an event. And it's because I know a lot of people are used to like religious circles and conference hopping and things like that. And so that I didn't want to paint that picture because that's not really what's going on. The heart and intention of this event is, is precious and beautiful and life giving. <clears throat> and the people hosting are, are amazing. So it's beautiful. But it brought up that that topic of almost everything in life has a cost. You know that, have you ever heard that acronym to staff? Well, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Well, somebody might be eating what to them is a free lunch, but it really wasn't free. It cost all the way back to whoever planted the seed to grow the grain, to make the bread, to, you know, <laughs> whoever worked in the factory or the farmer that planted the the produce or raise the animal that was you know gave their life or whatever there's always something else involved the packaging the factory that made the packaging the person who delivered it all the time and that's just like scratching the surface so even though one person may be getting a free lunch there's much more involved so how that applies to um, to this is that a lot of um, conferences events concerts even things listed as worship times or whatever, they cost money. The reason that they cost money, whether a small or large amount, is because it costs a lot of money to host these things. Many places have to be have to rent the facility, and those are not cheap. Um, <clears throat> you have to honor the people who are traveling from all over the country and sometimes other nations to come to the place. That costs airfare, that costs uh, lodging. Even if you have a host home, you still have to have food, you have to have transportation, gas costs, 
Um, so most people, um, you know, the money has to come from somewhere. <laughs> and so uh, there's sound, there's lighting, there's all kinds of things behind the scenes that um, a lot of people, we, we don't even think about. All we see is, what does this thing cost, you know, X amount of money and I can never afford to go to anything. So that was what we were talking about with FOMO. For a long time, I uh, was in that category, or I guess, I mean, it still happens here and there, but I was definitely in the mindset category of, I can never afford to go to anything. I can never afford to go to every woman's conference because you not only have to pay for your ticket, you also have to pay for the lunch that's like mandatory. Then there's the merch table, which you can never afford that stuff on the merch table then uh, you have to take off work, so you're missing your salary. Some people have to get babysitters. So it's like, it's not just a one fee, it's all this cost. And I got so stressed because I was like, I can't even afford to get in the door, much less all the other costs that come. But when I started working with um, a particular ministry she was talking about who was more well-known and we hosted events with big names, etc., I got a greater understanding of everything that goes into it because the heart of, of um, the people who put these things on, they always did it as minimum as they could to the person who was gonna be attending. The goal was not, we need to just make a buck or promote something you know, because we're flashy. It was always like, what's the budget? Because we have to make X amount just to like get by and pay the bill. And then we have our families to feed, so how much do we need for that? It was never about, you know, and obviously there's people out there just like in any sphere, who have the wrong intentions or have, you know, selfish <clears throat> motives or whatever. <clears throat> but I got a lot more insight into what it really takes to put on something like that. So going to the fear of missing out, um, because I wasn't able to attend so many things, and I felt like many times I was the only one in my little sphere. <laughs> like, for example, if you're if all the women in your church are going to the, or most of the women in your church are going to the event, or there's a guest speaker who's a musician who's bringing, or a preacher or something who's bringing all this stuff, or some cool um, healing type of a thing, like somebody with a healing bowl. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not going to, I don't want to give specifics. There's lots but of those. The, plenty of, you know, the latest meditation and the latest sound therapy, the latest cool massage, the latest counseling, whatever, all these beautiful things which are tools and the people have their livelihood in that and it's not like it's not worth it per se but it, I've often said who can afford all these things who can just automatically go to everything that comes into town I have it's like maybe someday I will have tons of money and I'll just do it it's just natural um, but in all that I I've had to come to the the learning curve of People used to say, oh, well, you you already carry everything that, you know, is going to be presented anyway because, you know, you already have it. It's not like you're missing out on anything. And I would think, that sounds great in theory, but what does that even mean? Like, what do you mean I'm already carrying? Like, obviously, they're coming to town for a reason. You're going. You know, what, what does that even <laughs> mean? Are you just trying to make me feel better? Like, I don't understand. And, um, and then, of course, after the whatever the event would be. Oh, man, you should have been there. Oh, my gosh, my whole life was changed. And then when he said that thing. And I'll I never be this. And he called me out. Ah, you know, and it's like this <laughs> momentum. And you're like, well, Crap. dang. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's this real, especially after, feeling like. A letdown. Really missing out. There's been times where I couldn't go to things because literally my car, several times, I didn't have a car that was working or I lived with somebody. I remember this one time who wasn't willing to, to take me even though I could afford that particular conference. I literally had no ride. It was just, I know a lot of people who have been in this boat. Um, and, but I was recently thinking about it because this conference is coming up this week and just having more of a peace inside because I've seen confirmation after confirmation of we're all on a journey we can always glean from whatever the speaker whatever the music whatever and there's there is a power in in the coming corporate. together corporately yes. yes oh my goodness yes it's beautiful and we're not just loner island isolated people so I don't ever want to like forsake that concept <clears throat> 
but in the event that either finances or if God literally leads you not to go to this or not to go to part of it because he can do that too and it doesn't make sense to people well why are you coming like this is the thing you yeah. have the money or whatever and it's like sometimes he will lead that so whatever it is I've lately been having more of a peace in the cat in that area um, but what's helped me is for example showing up to different church <clears throat> services and they're speaking on the very same thing that God was already speaking to me throughout the week or he gave me a dream about or things like that like repeatedly and so for me personally it's helped me not to think I'm gonna miss out I'm gonna miss out because I have the same Holy Spirit as those people do again not forsaking or rejecting or, or discounting what they what they have to present that's a timely word but I don't have to have fear of missing out because the the same God that they're that speaking through them is the same God who can speak to me exactly the same message on the insides. I may not have word for word the detail like that, but my spirit will resonate with that same <clears throat> truth, and it's up to me still whether I'm physically present or not to respond to that. You can be physically present in a place and not have the same response, so that's not even always a fact. So fear of missing out, <clears throat> not just in religious circles, but you see a friend that begins to get successful. Yeah. Um, they have less a skill set than you. They have less training than you. They have less years than you on the planet. They have less wisdom than you. But yet all of a sudden, they're like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. They're on the they're like I know watching people it's like wow look what they're doing and you want to celebrate I do I celebrate all these people and I have helped a lot of people move forward and there's some people that are out there that I know that Craig and I launched years ago but nobody would know and nobody has to know or need to know but it's like I know the Spirit of God within me is a launching pad and a platform to help people move forward in their actual callings. But we're not big dogs. You know, we don't have a worldwide ministry, although we could. Although um, we have a ministry that impacts the world, we don't have a recognized worldwide ministry. We are part of worldwide ministry specific ministries on the planet that are moving and shakers all over the world but that place on the inside the place where you take a deep breath and you just drink and you eat and you're a normal person that's the person that God speaks to that's the person that God lives in God lives in us he lives and moves and has his being in us as individuals. He's not just after giving us some kind of spiritual message. So this FOMO, this word I just learned, this fear of missing out. Years ago, when I was part of a church where I was part of for many years and loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, and still love it, that church I was at every conference. I ran book tables. I, I was part of anything and everybody. I knew everybody. Everybody knew me. It's like I was a poster child for that church. I didn't even think of not going. It didn't even cross my mind that I wouldn't be at a conference. But you know what? I would say no to being with my family because I was going to be at a conference. I would say no to doing XYZ because I was going to be with my family at the conference. So I would forsake my family family to be over here with this family. And listen, spiritual family can be stronger than biological family any day of the week. My point is that in that season of immaturity, immaturity inside of me, that place of strong immaturity where I thought if I wasn't in a church service, if I wasn't in this spiritual space, proximity-wise, that I would miss out. Showed a strong lack 
in my maturity, lack in my character, and lack in my revelation of God literally living inside of me. It took years for that to be erased. I'm with Jen when it comes to like even Sunday in church, what was taught and preached and even spoken by people in all those testimonies. I literally had a conversation with someone the day before and it was almost verbatim. Everything that was said and discussed and all the nuances and you know it was just really uncanny. But why is that? Because God lives inside of me. I'm in union with the same God that the big dogs are in union with. Listen, you're in union with the same dog that the big dogs are in union with. You are in union. You are in union. You, little old you or big old you is in union. And in that space where you live your real life, your everyday life, man, that's a place where God shakes nations. God shakes nations going into the grocery store, guys. Getting to know the cashier and the checker. That person's gonna go into their home and they're gonna literally remove the tapestry of the unbelief in their whole system of life. Just because you said hello and loved that person continually year after year after year. Something that God gave me on Sunday was this and it was very interesting because I don't go to church every Sunday anymore. I've taken a strong sabbatical away. I think I may start back now. But um, he told me something in service. And this is what he said. He said, this is your high octane, your high octane fuel. I'm like, oh, okay. And I got it. I'm like, yeah, this is my high octane fuel. This is my fuel. Now, doesn't mean I don't get fuel during the week on my own. I keep my tank full. But on that, that space, that corporate space, where there's different things happening and there's different faith coming in and belief coming in, everybody confirming what God's saying and what we're all moving and grooving and living and moving and having our being in the same one, in that place. That's my high octane fuel. Fear of missing out. I get my fuel already but there's a place inside where once you know who you are, you no longer live by fear. You no longer live by the fear you're gonna miss out if you don't show up. Because the one who lives inside of you is never gonna leave you and never gonna forsake you and always inside of you and always moving and grooving inside you and always has an intention inside you and always going to give through you. <clears throat> My whole, my whole kind of core bottom line to all of this is about the, uh, how our mind needs to agree with the truth of our spirit. Mm. Because truth is truth no matter what. Facts come and go and all of that, but truth remains regardless of how we feel or what the weather is like or how someone treats us or doesn't treat us or what we have or don't have materially. Truth is truth. It's just whether you even believe it or not, it's still the truth. And so I was remembering um, I used to re struggle really strongly with like severe like panic attack things and I was pretty good at masking it most of the time so usually unless someone was really 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 discerning you couldn't really tell the torment that I was under <laughs> and I had a lot of co weird coping mechanisms just for survival mode but I remember many times in different ways people would just literally even physically be like oh man you just carry so much peace like I'm just so relaxed and comfortable when you're here it's like I just feel the God it's like the peace of God just like wafts and emanates from you <laughs> and I would be thinking are you literally insane like obviously God's with me but I feel uh, less than zero peace right now I have <laughs> no idea what's going on inside of me this is not peace whatever maybe you're just thinking positive thoughts about about me or like having high hopes for the future you know i was like i, I hope I, like, I literally it did not compute and i mean i was 
told that so often. It's one of the things that I used to be taught. It hasn't happened so much lately, honestly. <laughs> but it used to be complimented all the time. Where people would say, can you, literally, I got asked this more than once, can you come over to my house? Because just you sitting, even if you're working on something, just bring whatever you need to do. Sitting in my home, I get all this stuff accomplished with just your presence because I feel like God is here and the peace of God and the order of God comes. And I would think, my life is in chaos. Like, I don't even, <laughs> what? I wish that that were true. But I would watch the fruit all around me. And so it was like, to me, it's the same thing. It was like, it's FOMO in a way of what am I missing? Because there's like a disconnect going on and I was just in, I need help mode. Um, so I feel like, you know, whoever is watching this, that that's you where maybe someone else recognizes something in you that they might attribute to God or may not even say it's God. Just <clears throat> a positive thing about your character and you're like, what? <laughs> that's actually the truth. Even if you haven't recognize it in yourself because those are life-giving things and again it's all from the God who lives within us who is the author of all life and when we talk about things like fruit of the spirit for anyone who grew up in church world um, it's kind of one of those phrases that can even get dumbed down a little bit like you're used to seeing coloring pages with oranges and bananas and such <laughs> fruit of the spirit but like what does that mean and I was thinking really what it means is evidence mm. <laughs> the fruit of something is the evidence of something and so a, it's just you know a tree yes produces fruit but it's the <clears throat> evidence of what the tree is carrying and so um, being kind to someone like she was talking about <clears throat> or just not being rude when you could be rude that might seem like the most minor thing on the totem pole but that's actually carrying the presence of God and manifesting a fruit where you could, where you could choose to go off on someone or whatever. <clears throat> Another thing that I was thinking with, with when she was talking about something, I forget. It's not just in church, in church stuff, but that was one category. I was remembering, and I don't remember the name, but it was uh, someone who worked at NASA as a janitor when the people were gonna first land on the moon. <clears throat> There's this story floating around, I could probably find it online. Um, but basically, the, like the president, I think, came to visit and take a tour, and he, he saw this janitor man in the, in the hall or somewhere, and he was like, oh, and what is it that you do? And the man was sweeping and he said, I'll just help put a man on the moon. Amen. <laughs> and I was, when I, I still get the chills. But every time I think about that story, I get blown away because it's literally, he could have had ultra FOMO. His perspective, like, man. Like, dude, someone's leaving the planet and landing on the moon. Like, th that was huge. The whole <laughs> world was watching that, you know? But he was doing his part. And based on the comment, Precious. it sounded like he was, he had found his contentment in that. I don't know what was going on on the inside of him, but based on that, that would be fruit or evidence of his mind agreeing with the truth that yes, what I do affects you, what you do affects me, and when we're all walking in that truth and in that uh, confidence and knowing that we don't have to be afraid, you know, anything motivated, made it, motivated by fear is not good anyway. So <laughs> fear of missing out is rooted in fear. It's kind of become a joke and FOMO and, you know, there's even a FOMO factory now, which I actually would like to visit. It looks fun. <clears throat> but it's that idea of, I'm always afraid I'm going to, I'm going to miss the party, miss the fun, miss the story, miss the cool experience. I, I realized I had that as a lot as a kid. I never wanted to go to sleep because all the cool stuff happened. <laughs> You know, I had such a stinking early bedtime that the adults would stay up and have fun or watch this cool show or play the game in the evening. And so even though I was already kind of bent that way toward night, I know that that played a part in me never wanting to go to bed. And I would hear my friends playing outside still sometimes because it was so light. So I definitely had FOMO <laughs> as a kid. Anyway, these are just other examples I'm, I'm thinking of. No, 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 that's good. And versus... Versus, we don't know what we carry. We don't know. What versus we knowing who you are and what you have. And listen, it is a process. Seeing, seeing it, it's a process. 
gaining entry to that eyesight of knowing who lives in you. And that process is the journey. That process is the intimacy. The process, whether it be through pain, through hurts, through betrayals, through joys, <clears throat> through sicknesses, it's the, it, it's the knowing that wherever you are, there God is. Wherever yes. you are, there Father is. Wherever you are, there the Christ is. Wherever you are, there Spirit is. Wherever you are, there they are. And so, heck no, you won't miss out. If you're, if you're, listen, hear me. If your focus is on, I've got to get that t-shirt, <laughs> man. I, I'm going to get that t-shirt. And I'm going to hang out with uh, Mr. XYZ and I'm going to get an autograph. Well then, yeah, you're going to miss out because if you're not present for those things, sure, you're not going to get that autograph. Got, I get that. But when you know that the intention and the purpose is to connect with your spirit alive in your Creator, with your spirit alive in the Father, your spirit alive in the Christ, your spirit alive in the Spirit, your spirit alive in who made you, when you really get it, there's no missing out. Because wherever you are, there they are. Listen, I've had a crappy about year and a half, I have to admit, physically. And there were a couple people, one in particular, and just a precious woman who pursued me privately. Surprised me, surprised me, surprised me, surprised me, surprised me, surprised me, surprised me. And then after a while, it's like they kind of dropped off the map with me. But in that season of reawakening me to the significance of me being on the planet, because unbeknownst to me, I had been drifting in a deep place where I don't know that I would have recovered, honestly. Listen, there are places. I just did a video on suicide last night. It's just been so strong feeling that going on with people's lives right now. I know that the darkness was trying to lure me in. And the isolation was reinforcing it. And in that place of dimness, I, I, Donna, was forgetting who lives inside of me. Now, God wasn't forgetting. God was constantly, every day, Donna, I love you, Donna. I'm right here, Donna. But God also used a human being to break into that space inside of me to remind me, hello, Donna, I work through humanity, and Donna, I work through you. Donna, I live in you. Me, if I looked at the last year and a half and I see what I could have done, what I should have done, what I wished I'd done, I could definitely move into a space of thinking, wow, I missed a whole year and a half of my life. If I allowed COVID to claim the last year and a half, I could probably live in some regret. But the truth is, my physical body had things happening. My mind had things happening, still does. Uh, my finances had things happening. My, my whole place inside of me literally was doing having this happen. But do you know what God was doing? While I wasn't going to services, while I wasn't in prayer, while I wasn't reading my Bible, while I wasn't speaking life into anybody, while I wasn't doing those things that make me alive, you know what God was doing? God was recalibrating me. God was recentering me. God was refocusing me, unbeknownst to me. The reason I'm saying that is because wherever you go, wherever you are, there He is. You're not going to miss out because the one inside of you is pursuing you. The one inside of you loves you. The one inside of you is for you and not against you. The one inside of you wants you to live. The one inside of you has something for you. The one inside of you has an intention in your life. I talked to somebody just the other day who told me, you know, I think I've just decided I'm going to die. 
I ask God every day, just go ahead and take me. Just go ahead and take me. And I was like, wow. Because I don't want this person to do that. But this person is in a personal care home and, and it's a very difficult situation and there's no one who could see her and she hasn't been touched and there are just things happening in, in that world that young people don't know about unless they're part of it. And and I said, well, what, what's happening? And she goes, I'm waiting to hear from God. I said, okay, fair enough. I said, are you hearing anything? Said, no. But then she explains to me all this darkness. I said, well, when you're in the midst of darkness and you know that your mind and your thoughts are leaning you into, I don't want to live anymore. That's where if you're choosing that, I said, you can also choose to listen to someone that's going to pour life into you. You can listen to someone who is hearing the voice of God for life so that you can pull up out of the space you're in and bring come back into life again because that life is what's going to help you walk again. That life is what's going to help you hold a pen again. That life is what's going to help you uh, reestablish yourself with humanity again. That life is what's going to help you fulfill your dream which is to walk back in the church again without a walker. All these things are going to take place and they don't always take place just like that like we want with the miracles of Jesus. Sometimes they take place with one intention after another after another. And so there she is, God inside of her, and her thoughts are partnering with this darkness that's luring her into a place like I was being lured into to never come out of. But yet there is God. Well, how, what's the evidence of that? I called her on the phone. She called me on the phone. We're having conversation in the practical, regular, everyday life not just in a meeting because she can't go to a meeting listen the majority of humanity is not going to be in a meeting the majority of humanity is going to be in the streets in your everyday work in your everyday life in your everyday neighbor your everyday coffee shop your everyday butcher your everyday grocery store your everyday employment that's where the real god is and these other things that we go do they're just a high octane but it doesn't mean you missed out. Just because you got premium and not high octane doesn't mean you don't have it. <laughs> You're still getting filled. <laughs> we need to wrap. You, yeah, you wrap. You're good. Yeah. You, you get to wrap. Two, two more things. One is um, <clears throat> all love comes from the same source. Love with a capital L. And that is God. He is love. And He is within us. And so... We kind of measure things like on some kind of scale or spectrum, like great acts of love and small acts of love, mm. you know, like someone who sells everything and goes and lives in the desert and helps, you know, people who have no water. Like, yes, that sounds like it could be very much love. Uh, but also moving that grocery cart out of the way before it mo bangs someone ca someone's car in the parking lot, that's actually love. <laughs> um, you may not even be feeling super lovey, you know, but that's actually all because it's all streaming from the same source, mm. which is God. If you think of like mm. water, you know, there's the ocean and then it has tributaries. There's, there's rivers that turn into little streams and brooks and all of that. It's just like, there's only one source of love, but he flows through each one of us. And so, um, that came to mind that just to remember that, you carry love and you carry his presence everywhere you go, whether or not you're feeling in the mood. But it is it is powerful to get your our minds in agreement with that and start thinking on the things that are are good and lovely and pure and positive and full of life and light um, for ourselves and for everyone else because we're all connected whether we want to think we are or not. The other thing is is if you are a person who, let's say, has a lot of financial wealth or literally is at every event or is just curious or has that hunger inside or whatever, there's absolutely no guilt. Amen. Just in case there was some weird little thing trying That's to true. niggle at you. Rock like, on, well, enjoy. gee, I actually met everything and, like, you know, <laughs> I buy the whole merch table and, Woo! oh my gosh, it's like, oh my gosh, darling. please do. Like, <laughs> enjoy. You know, there's, it's, it's not a, that's kind of the point, you know, how it's like the same thing, but from a different angle. Um, you can, you can have, 
You can have everything and still have nothing, you know, feel like you have nothing on the inside. Or you can have nothing, nothing. And feel like you have everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's, so it's not either like either or or something like that. It, there's no judgment on that. It's it's about our mindset and our motivation and the realization that we carry much more than we are aware of. And even if you are having awareness, there's always more. So, um, but yeah, I just felt like maybe somebody would need to hear that. Like, there's absolutely no guilt. Like, please, please enjoy. Yeah. And there's no um, comparison. You know, you don't have to feel bad if you can afford something or if you get a platform or your dreams come true. Oh my goodness, praise God. <laughs> like, celebrate. Um, because it's not what it's, it's not really what it's about. It's good. So God, we release <laughs> blessings and strength and peace. God, to anyone that has the fear of missing out. God, we release a, a, a revelation of who lives inside of them so they see that wherever they go, there you are. And they can never miss out on you. Because you're always in pursuit. God, we release a, a redirection and a recalibration of thoughts and processes and ideas and trust and understanding. God, more than anything, God, we release a revelation of the reality of your life and your love. In the midst of strife, in the midst of wars, in the midst of diseases, in the midst of sicknesses, in the midst of, oh my gosh, confusion. God, you, Father, are in the midst, and you're not disturbed, you're not afraid, and you're not moved by all this stuff, but your eyes are glanced from the inside out, seeing us, and moving with us, and living with us, and being in us. Because we'll never be missed. Because we're always found. So God just bless the hearers. And pray for revelation to come. In Jesus name. Amen. Cool beans. Mm -hmm. When you let love take over. And you let go of fear of missing out. It actually unlocks a boundary that you may not even have known was there and you'd be surprised at what provision does show up whether that's money or a relationship or whatever it is it's good so the point is being open that's and knowing good. what you have and, and who yes until soon bye, bye. A little snacks <laughs> little, little uh jesus snack man bye <laughs>